Shalom. As always, man, I'm thankful. I'm grateful to be out here to preach and to prophesy unto my people, being you so-called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. And according to the Bible, you are the biblical Hebrew Israelites. All right. And the Lord has sent men like myself to come out here to forewarn you of events that are going to come in the near future and to tell you to repent to turn back to your nationality turn back to the ways of your forefathers unless you want the Lord to destroy you okay the message is pretty simple it's not very complex but a lot of our people like to complicate things but before I go on with this lesson as always, I have to give all thanks and praises unto our power, the power of Israel, not the power of any other nation. All right. And what's his name? Yahweh. Bahashem Yahweh Shai. Bahashem Wawakakwadash. Peace, blessings, and much respect to the elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, on down to the rest of the elders who rule well within Israel. Salutations to the hopeful elect throughout the four corners of this whole entire earth no matter where whom they may be or what they may look like pushing out this purified truth to the rest of the church you believe as well including you men who may not be teachers or prophets you women sons and daughters as well and the water to Yahweh shy because without him enduring and going to that cross for the nation of Israel and the nation of Israel alone, none of this would even be possible whatsoever, okay? Time and time again, you know, the Lord sends us out here to preach, to bring out this word, okay? To minister unto our people. And clearly, the majority of our people, they are not interested in this. Their mind is not focused on this truth, all right? This is Romans chapter three and verse three. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the power without effect? The power forbid. Yea, let the power be true, but every man a liar. As it is written, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings, and mightest overcome when thou art judged. And at the end of the day, whether or not you believe, at the end of the day, whether or not you believe, we are going to be justified. Why? Because we have the spirit of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai upon us to bring forth these words that many people get trapped in. They don't understand. Most people are in gross darkness, man. Based off your unbelief, that's not enough to make us stop if we be of the elect. Your unbelief is not enough to make the Lord change his mind. The Lord is going to do his will, whether you believe or not. Okay? Let's go to the book of Job. This is the book of Job, chapter 12. This is the book of Job, chapter 12, and I'm going to go down to verse 16. With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. So if you don't believe in this truth, oh, well, it doesn't mean nothing. It doesn't change anything because guess what? The deceived and the deceiver are being controlled by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. So even if you don't believe, even if you fight against this truth, it's the Lord making you fight against this truth. Okay? So all of you non-believers, all of you people who have something ill to say against this ministry, even you are being controlled by Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. Even you are servants of the Lord. But you are left-hand servants. We who come out here and teach, 
who abide by the will of Yahweh by Shemi Shai, we are his right hand servants. No one on this earth is doing uh, their own will. No one has free will. No one has that capability. All things are controlled by the Lord. Okay? With him is strength and wisdom. The deceived and the deceiver are his. So the Lord controls both sides. Okay? The Lord controls the one who's deceiving. And the Lord controls the one being deceived. Just as the Lord controls the one giving the truth. All right? Let's go to 2nd Ezra. Second Ezra chapter 15 and verse 1. Behold, speak thou in the ears of my people the words of prophecy, which I will put in thy mouth, saith the Lord. So when we prophesy unto you, we are speaking through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shemiah Shai. We are speaking his words, but many people get caught up in that stumbling block of just seeing us as mortal men and there's no possible way that we could actually have a connection to the Heavenly Father and His Son. You see mortal men in front of you teaching this word as if we're just like you, like we're a bunch of hypocrites, like we don't practice what we preach. We're just out here for money. We're not like you people, okay? So we are speaking the words of Yahweh by Hashem Shai by speaking the words of prophecy because the spirit of Yahweh Shai is the spirit of prophecy and cause them to be written in paper for they are faithful and true. Fear not the imaginations against thee. Let not the incredulity of them trouble thee that speak against thee. So don't let the imaginations of these people trouble you. Don't let their unbelief trouble you, man. At the end of the day, Yahweh by Shemiah was shy is controlling them to buck up against you, to buck up against me, to buck up against this truth. The Lord controls both sides. And do we not serve the Lord? Do we not have a connection with the Lord? So why would the Lord deceive us into coming out here as if this is a waste of time? We come out here for the elect. We don't come out here to receive, you know, love by the world. We don't come out here to wake up all Israel. We come out here for the elect, man. Okay? And a lot of our people seeing that they're not right, it's not their time to come into this faith right now. They'll come in later on when the kingdom of heaven is established. Okay? For all the unfaithful shall die in their unfaithfulness. So all these unbelievers, unless they repent, they are going to die being an unbeliever. So why focus on them? You know, we're not considering, you know, when we go through the, the afflictions that we go through, you know, there's times that we're not considering that the Lord is actually controlling our enemies to do the things that they do. And here we are, we'll get irritated, we'll get vexed in the spirit, but we have to remember, Yahweh Ba Shem Yahweh Shai is controlling both sides, man. Nothing is against the Lord, Okay. And that includes the non-believers saying whatever they, ha uh, whatever they have to say against this truth. Behold, said the Lord, I will bring plagues upon the world, the sword, famine, death, and destruction. And that's prophecy. And that's what we're speaking unto you. We're telling you that the sword is coming. We're telling you that death and destruction is coming. And that's according to the Holy Bible. Okay? For wickedness hath exceedingly polluted the whole earth, and their hurtful works are fulfilled. And that's where we are right now. 
wickedness has totally polluted the whole world. You have men who claim that leaving America is a way for you to find a good wife. All these women have been influenced by Esau Edom. All these women all throughout the earth have been influenced by feminism, have been influenced by democracy, okay? And seeing that it's not just here in America, it's all throughout the world, we understand that that is also biblical prophecy. And that's why we sigh and we cry and we complain, okay? We complain about all the wicked abominations that be done in the midst of Babylon. And not just here in Babylon, but all throughout the earth, man. Okay? Therefore, said the Lord, I will hold my tongue no more as touching their wickedness, which they profanely commit, neither will I suffer them in those things in which they wickedly exercise themselves. Behold, the innocent and righteous blood cried unto me, and the souls of the just complain continually. So there you go. We sigh and we cry. We complain about the abominations that are happening all throughout the earth that surround us. No matter where we go, we have to lock eyes on wickedness, on abominations, and we find that highly offensive. Let's touch on Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 28 and verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and great kingdoms. My page is flipping. Give me a second here. of war and of evil and of pestilence. And that's what we're doing. We're prophesying against this wicked society, man. That's why we complain so much seeing how wickedness has totally polluted the whole earth. And we come out here, we teach, we preach, we complain about all the evil that's happening all throughout the earth, man. Okay? And because of that, because we speak against it, a lot of you following the ways of Esau, Edom, you look at us as your enemy. But that's why the Lord is going to destroy you, man. Here it is, all these things happening throughout the earth, showing you that the end is near. Your main concern is seeing us as the problem. And I'm speaking to you elites of Esau, Edom, because you know that your secrecy is being discovered. All the things that you were doing in dark is coming to light. And all the deception, the mass deception that you've spread throughout the earth, all the wickedness that has spread throughout the earth under your rule, you have very few compared to the majority, but it's still a lot in number that are waking up to your nonsense. And they're complaining about the ways of this world. They're coming out here, okay, claiming that they're Israelites, reading the Bible, wearing a garment, and telling you about yourself, telling you that your kingdom's going to be destroyed, just like many men before us, okay? And if you have a problem with that, you have to take it up with our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shah Hamashiach because that's our head, okay? The prophet which prophesied the peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord have truly sent him. So you have, um, you know, certain men, they'll speak peace, but at the end of the day, We'll see who the real prophets are when it comes to pass. The 
the prophet which prophesied to peace, when the word of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord has truly sent him. So eventually, you're going to know who the true prophets are. This is Ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 5. And they, whether they hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, speaking of the house of Israel, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. So the time will come where you will know who the true prophets are because the words that they speak eventually will have to come to pass. So if a prophet is telling you that peace is coming and then out of nowhere, martial law and destruction comes, you know that was a false prophet. But if he's speaking of war, evil or pestilence, and then these things come to pass, you know there was a prophet among you. So we're in that time now where the Lord is going to start shaking up the earth and showing you people who his prophets are. Showing you people who had this truth the whole time. Because ultimately, the majority of Israelites are going to rebel against this word. Ezekiel 2 and 5 again. And they, whether they hear or whether they will forbear, for they are a rebellious house, yet shall know that there hath been a prophet among them. And we look forward to that day where you realize that a prophet has been among you. And you're going to realize that when not only all hell breaks loose and these things come to pass, but when you see us getting beamed up into them chariots, you're really going to acknowledge that we were the prophets the whole time then. Okay? Let's go to the Apocrypha. Go to Wisdom of Solomon. Chapter 5. And verse... Hell, I'll just start at 1. That'd be a good place to start. Then shall the righteous man stand in great boldness before the face of such as have afflicted him. It made no account of his labors. When they see it, they shall be troubled with terrible fear and shall be amazed at the strangeness of his salvation. So far beyond all that they look for. So those who you are going to realize you'll finally consider they being the prophets, you're going to see their salvation right before you're destroyed if the Lord allows you to live that long, okay? And it's going to be far beyond that you were expecting. It's going to be a beautiful and a horrible sight for you to watch the men who you deemed as crazy being delivered right before the missiles come. And in your heart of hearts, you're going to know that those being beamed up are safe because you're going to hear a warning of those missiles being shot off. So right before those missiles hit, you're going to see certain males and females of the nation of Israel being beamed up, being delivered into a ship or multiple ships, as you will call UFOs. So the people who watch it, who behold it, and their heart of hearts, they'll know, dang, I'm still here. There was just a warning that missiles have been sent off and they're on the way. Am I going to be left here or am I going to be picked up as well? You're going to be left here and melted, okay? If you're not of the elect, only the elect are going to be delivered, okay? And they repenting and groaning for anguish of spirit shall say within themselves, this was he whom we had sometimes in derision and a proverb of reproach. Yeah, because you're going to acknowledge that we've been the prophets the whole time. Oh, he ain't no prophet. That's just my brother. Oh, that's my cousin. Oh, that's my son. I went to school with him. Oh, that's my ex-boyfriend, right? 
oh, I used to hang out with him. So there's no way that we could be the prophets according to the minds of you people. But when you see the men who are the prophets of the Lord get beamed up into them chariots, you'll feel stupid and you'll be repentant within yourself as you acknowledge that, dang, there was a prophet amongst me. Who would have ever known? I thought he was a normal guy. I thought he was, you know, a false prophet. I thought he was wasting his time. You thought wrong, buddy. Okay? We fools accounted his life madness and his end to be without honor. And the reason why people see our end to be without honor, let's touch on the book of John. John chapter 4 and verse 44. For Yahweh Shai himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. So we don't get no honor, any respect or reverence from these people right now. But it's all good because, you know, there is a season for everything. And right now, it's not our time. Yahweh Shai hasn't even gotten his moment yet. We're waiting for our Lord to get his moment so that we can be right beside him, right next to him. As he rules, we rule right alongside with him. Okay? That's what we want. Those of the hopeful elect, those of the remnant. Okay? And I hope, I believe I'm one of those men. Now, I don't know if I am for sure, but I believe through faith I'm one of those men. I feel in my heart I'm one of the prophets, man. I don't care if you believe it or not. My salvation is something that I have to look out for myself. I don't care about your unbelief. I don't care how you look at me as insignificant or unimportant or there's no way I could be a prophet. I don't get a lot of views. I'm wasting my time. Whatever the case, your incredulity is not troubling me enough to say, you know what? Let me throw in the towel. To hell with that. We understand according to the Bible that a prophet is without honor in his own city. His own country. His own family will reject him. Okay? His own so-called friends will reject him. It's just a lot that we are in. It's the lot that the Lord put us in. And it's okay though, because our honor will come after the humility. Okay? It's just a part of the process. For Yahweh Shai himself testified that a prophet hath no honor in his own country. That's why people don't acknowledge us as being the men of the Lord. It's prophecy. Yahweh Shai already told us this. So we shouldn't be surprised. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 5 and verse 4. We fools counted his life madness and his end to be without honor. How is he numbered among the children of the power and his lot is among the saints? Therefore have we erred from the way of truth and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us and the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. Yeah, because you're in darkness. If you don't have this truth, if you can't receive this word, that's because you are in darkness. The reason why you didn't acknowledge the men of the Lord as being the men of the Lord is because that, that light did not shine upon you. Isaiah chapter 8 and verse 20 to the law and to the testimony if they speak not according to this word it is because there is no light in them so the reason why you know you Israelites have a problem with what we're doing okay you see us as insignificant we're good you see us as insignificant you see us as unimportant as you know wasting our time wasting your time 
okay? You're going to find out through death by pain, okay? Through, through being humiliated by the Lord that there was a prophet among you the whole time and you was rejecting and you were scoffing and talking your nonsense because you couldn't receive the light, okay? To the law and to the testimony. If they, being you Israelites, speak not according to this word, it is because there is no light in them. Okay? So if you don't have this word in you, you're in darkness. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 5, and verse 6. Therefore have we erred from the way of truth, and the light of righteousness hath not shined unto us. And the sun of righteousness rose not upon us. We wearied ourselves in the way of wickedness and destruction. Yea, we have gone through deserts where there lay no way. But as for the way of the Lord, we have not known it. Yeah, you've gone through deserts. If you don't have this truth, you don't have the water. If you don't have this truth, you don't have the life. You don't have the spirit. You're dead without this truth. And the majority of you Israelites, you're dead. You're dead. That's why you can't receive the knowledge. That's why you have a problem with Yahweh by Shem Shai. You have a problem with his servants. You have a problem with righteousness. Okay? And you uphold and you support this wicked, evil kingdom. Okay? But the Lord is against you. Second Timothy chapter three and verse three. Without natural affection, truth breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. So a lot of people are despisers of the prophets. Okay, because we're ministering unto you the ways of good, the ways of righteousness. And you hate us for it. Let's go down to verse 13. But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom thou hast learned them. So a lot of men are deceived and being deceived. They're waxing worse and worse. But us who hope to be of the house of David, we can't change like the moon as a fool would. Okay, we can't be given over to change. We have to remember what we've been taught. Don't let nobody tell you the Jews aren't the so-called Negro. Don't let nobody tell you that you Israelites, you Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans are not those people. Don't let nobody tell you Esau, Edom can be saved or Esau, Edom, they're done away with as a people. They don't exist. We have to remember the things that we've been taught and remember who taught us, man. That's why me, I'm not of any particular camp, but I acknowledge who my teachers are. Okay, that's why I always reverence the uh, elders and the apostles of Great Millstone, okay? Because those were the men who have guided me throughout the years and seeing that I myself has been guided by men, I come out here and teach and I guide others as well. Iron sharpeneth iron, all right? We all learn from each other and we learn from ourselves. But a fool, they're not going to learn they're just going to wax worse and worse till the day comes that the Lord destroys them. But continue thou in the things with that which thou hast learned and has been assured of. So we know for a fact we're sure that we're Israelites. And that's why we teach it because we believe it. Okay. But continue thou in the things which thou hast learned and hast been assured of, knowing of whom 
thou has learned them. So we are sure of this ministry, okay? We are sure that we are the Israelites. Let's go to the book of 2 Corinthians. Second Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13. We have in the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore we speak or and therefore speak. Let me read that again. We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written. I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak so we are assured of what we learn and that's why we come out here and we speak it and that's how we're also confident in the fact of knowing that we are the biblical israelites okay we are those people who walked across the, the red sea with moses we are those people man okay and whether you believe it or not that doesn't take away from the truth. It doesn't take away from what it is, man. All right? We having the same spirit of faith according as it is written, I believed and therefore have I spoken. We also believe and therefore speak, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Yahweh Shai shall raise up us also by Yahweh Shai and shall present us with you and we have faith in that man okay just like our lord and savior yahweh shai was raised up we're hoping to be raised up as well as long as we endure until the end and we understand that a lot of you israelites you don't believe okay this is second peter's uh chapter one This is 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. So we're not questioning whether or not what we're saying is true. We're telling you it's true. We're sure of it. And we have to hold on to the words that we've been taught. Being sure of it. Make known this ministry to the rest of the world, whether they believe it or not, man. Okay? Because these prophecies are going to happen. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Where unto you, where unto ye, do well that ye take heed, as unto a light that shineth in a dark place until the day dawn, and the day star arise in your hearts. Knowing this first, that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of the power spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. So we bring out these words through the spirit and power of our Lord and Savior, Yahweh Shai. Okay? Yahweh Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai. And you. You non-believers out there, you don't consider that. You see this as the will of man, okay? And that's where you are going to be caught off guard and you are going to be put to shame. Let's go to um Isaiah This is the book of Isaiah chapter
46 and verse 10. Declaring, verse 9, Remember the former things of old, for I am the power and there is none else. I am the power and there is none like me. Declaring the end from the beginning and from the ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, I will do all my pleasure. And that's why we are sure of these prophecies, because these words have been declared from the very beginning. And every last one of these prophecies are going to come to pass. Not one of them has failed yet. So seeing that um, the Bible, the scriptures have a good track record, You'd be an idiot not to believe it. You'd be an, idi an idiot not to ponder on the words of the Lord and consider what he's saying through the mouth of his prophets. Okay? Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times the things that are not yet done saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Let's go to Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 9, verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as the rain cometh down and the snow from heaven and returneth not thither, but watereth the earth and maketh it bring forth in bud that it may give seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So this word is like water, okay? This word is watering the elect. The elect are waking up due to this word going up. So the words of the Lord are being accomplished. And through the elect bringing out this word, more prophecies are coming to pass because the Lord is moving. The Lord is um, backing up what he said he would do because he is a man about his word. He's not a man that he shall lie. He was the same yesterday, today, and he'll be the same tomorrow. Okay? So shall my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth and the mouth of the Lord are the prophets. Okay, it shall not return unto me void, but it shall accomplish that which I please, and it shall prosper in the thing whereto I sent it. So this word is going out all throughout the earth, and things are happening because the Lord is making it happen. Okay. This is the book of Numbers. Numbers chapter 23 and verse 19. The power is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said, and shall he not do it? Or hath he spoken, and shall he not make it good? So the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. These words, which are his words, are written because they are faithful and true. And the reason why we're so confident in bringing them out is because we know that the Lord is not going to go back on his word and change his mind. He put that faith in us to come out here to do this he put that spirit of belief within us to come out here and do this. And all you non-believers, 
he put that spirit on you as well, man. Okay? If you don't believe, you don't believe. But that does not stop the truth from being the truth, man. All right? Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. I will stand upon I will stand upon my watch and set me upon the tower and will watch to see what he will say unto me and what I shall answer when I am reproved. And the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain upon tables that he may run that readeth it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Why? Because the Lord is not a man that he shall lie. He already declared the end from the beginning. All you have to do is follow what the Lord says. Don't go to the left. Don't go to the right. Do as the Lord says. Okay? For the vision is yet for an appointed time. According to the book of uh, Ecclesiastes 3 and 1, there is a season for everything. Just like with prophecies. Certain prophecies will happen when their season comes. Okay? Just like, yeah, the, the missiles... They have been created, but they haven't been used yet because it's not that particular season as of yet. But everything has its appointed time. Okay? For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it, because it will surely come, it will not tarry. And how do we know that? Because the Lord... Is not a man that he shall lie. Wherever he sends this word out to, it will be accomplished. These words don't go out void. These words are bringing the end of this society. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 51. Jeremiah 51 and verse 46. Unless your heart faint and ye fear for the rumor that shall be heard in the land. A rumor shall both come one year and after that in another year shall come a rumor and violence in the land ruler against ruler. So a lot of our people, they're stuck up in that mentality of everything being a rumor. I've heard that already. You feel like the Lord is tarrying. But here it is. We're in those times now where things are not tarrying anymore. Things that were once a rumor are no longer a rumor. But it's clear as day, these things are real. These things are operating right now as we speak. The mark of the beast is... is uh. Here is just waiting to be presented. The missiles are here. They're just waiting to be presented. Okay? The lockdown of this society is just waiting to be presented. All of these prophecies that were foretold from the days of old, they have their appointed time. And we're coming into the time where those things are not only near, they're right at the door. The return of our Lord Yahweh Shai is right at the door. And salvation is nearer than when we believe. We, we, we know it's close, but it's closer than what we even know. Because you have certain brothers, they might feel we're going to be here another two years. What if we're out in six months? We might feel we'll be out of here by 2025. What if we're out here by 2024? Okay? But we understand that we're close. And we hasten the day. We don't know the exact time or the exact hour, 
but the Lord has put the spirit on us to know that season. And we are in that season. We are in that time. Okay? There's no way we're not. Let's jump down to Verse 47, therefore behold the days come that I will do judgment upon the graven images of Babylon and her whole land shall be confounded and all her slain shall fall in the midst of her. So right now, yeah, it's a rumor, right? But the day will come where judgment will actually take place. It will actually happen right before your eyes. And you don't, uh, you don't ponder on that right now because you're too distracted, you're too caught up in your life. And because the Lord has been patient, a lot of people have the mentality of doing what they want to do until the day comes that the Lord destroys them off the face of the earth. Okay? This is Ecclesiastes chapter 8 and verse 11. Because sentence against an evil work is not executed speedily, therefore the heart of the sons of men is fully set in them to do evil. So America hasn't been destroyed yet, okay? This society hasn't been placed on lockdown yet. You haven't been tempted with the mark of the beast yet, okay? You're not put on curfew yet. So it's really set in the minds of people to do what they want to do. And that's why the scriptures tell us where we at. That's why the scriptures tell us that the beginning of wisdom is to fear the Lord. If you don't fear the Lord, you are insane. You are a psychopath. You are suicidal. You are nuts. And you clearly don't know who the Lord is, man. And because of the Lord being patient, it's in the mind of a lot of people to just go about their wickedness as if the Lord is not going to pay them a visit. Okay? Though a sinner do evil a hundred times and his days be prolonged, yet surely I know that it shall be well with them that fear the power which fear before him, but it shall not be well with the wicked. Neither shall he prolong his days, which are as a shadow, because he feareth not before the power. And that's an issue, man. If you don't fear the Lord, you got a problem on your hands. You clearly don't know the personality of Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai. Okay? You've been lied to, man. The Lord is not playing games with none of us. That's why we have to be on point. Okay? Let's go to the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach and the Apocrypha. Chapter 5 and verse 6. And say not his mercy is great. He will be pacified for the multitude of my sins. For mercy and wrath come from him and his indignation resteth upon sinners. Make no tarrying to turn to the Lord and put not off from day to day. For suddenly shall the wrath of the Lord come forth and in thy security thou shalt be destroyed and perish in the day of vengeance. Set not thy heart upon goods unjustly gotten for they shall not profit thee in the day of calamity. And we're coming into that time where the Lord is going to bring a lot of calamity to the earth, man. And your riches, your sorcery, your idols, none of these things are going to be able to deliver you. Your own physical strength. Okay, how many weapons you have? All right. You have to turn to Yahweh by Shemi Shai if you want to be saved and delivered from what's coming. And it's that serious.
Isaiah. Because this truth ain't for everybody. This is Isaiah chapter 11 and verse 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. So in order for you to fear the Lord, you have to have that spirit put on you, man, from the Lord himself. But the reason why people put off from day to day to serve the Lord is because they lack the fear of the Lord. They don't see any reason to fear Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shai. They too busy fearing Satan, man. They fear the devil. They fear what the evil one can do, but not the one who the evil one has to answer to, okay? Because you've been given a doctrine of this world that's been taught by the precept of men. And that's why you haven't been taught to fear the Lord You've been taught to take advantage of the Lord, okay? Which has caused you, a lot of you, to be non-believers. Because when something bad happens, you'll blame the Lord as if the Lord actually didn't do it. You'll blame the Lord as if he just didn't have the power to fix it. Or he just didn't want to fix it. He just sat back and let it happen. Look, the Lord controls everything, man. And the best thing for you to do is to try to remain on his good side. And shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. And he shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, neither reprove after the hearing of his ears. Okay? So you have to have that spirit placed on you to be able to see, to have the understanding, to have the fear of the Lord placed in you. It has to be given to you. Just like to have faith, it has to be given to you. It's an actual gift. All right. Ephesians chapter two. And verse eight. For by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of the power, not of your works, lest any man should boast. So faith is something that's given to you from birth. You can't boast on your works, man. And the fact that we come out here, that's a token, that's a sign that Yahweh Ba Shemi Shai has put that spirit on us to even do so. No man on his own is just so, you know, just so with it, so to speak, that he be able to come out here and do this and then fighting demons throughout the week while making lessons. Okay, all of this happens because we have the Lord behind us, man. Okay? The Lord has to be with you for you to be on his right hand, just as the Lord has to put you on the left hand as well. But everything is a gift. For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of the power. So not all Israelites have that belief. Okay? It's a, it's a gift. But we have no real reason to not believe anyway. And this is why. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus, also known as the book of Sirach, chapter 2. In verse 10, look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? Okay, the Lord has never, ever turned his back on his servants. Okay, all those of the house of David have never been forsaken. Regardless of what they had to go through, what they had to face. And there's times you feel like you're alone. You're never alone. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh is always with us. Yahweh Ba Hashem Yahweh is always strengthening us. He's always keeping us encouraged. And that's also why he gave us the brotherhood. You may feel a little down in the spirit. Then you watch a video from one of the brothers. And you may have never met the brother, not in this life. All of a sudden you're pumped up. 
all of a sudden you're inspired to do a lesson. All of those uh, lessons that brothers make and you come across it, that was meant for you to hear, man. That was meant for you. And that's how you have to take it. These videos that brothers are making, it's not just words, man. These words are spirit and life. And so as long, so so be that a brother is, is speaking based off the scriptures, that brother is speaking life. Okay? Look at the generations of old and see, did ever any trust in the Lord and was confounded? The answer is no. Or did any abide in his fear and was forsaken? The answer is no. Or whom did he ever despise that called upon him? The answer is no one. Okay? So we have all the reason to be confident in the words of Yahweh Bashem Yahweh Shai. You know, because even to this day, he hasn't shown any any reason to feel discouraged or to feel like we're wasting our time. The Lord has been showing us that what we're doing is the right way and to keep on going, man. The Lord has been showing me many spiritual signs, okay, to where I'd be a damn idiot to just, you know, want to turn back now. Hell no. Ain't no way, man. Ain't no way, okay? I, I'd rather drop dead, okay, than to say, you know what? I'm going to just throw in a towel and, and go back into the world and do whatever's left of this place that these people do. Hell no, man. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi chapter 3 and verse 14. Ye have said it is vain to serve the power. And what profit is it that we have kept this ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? And now we call the proud happy. Yea, they that work wickedness are set up. Yea, they that tempt the power are even delivered. So a lot of people see what we're doing as a waste of time. Here it is. We live in a world where you can be wicked as hell and prosper. But we come out here and we serve the Lord. We live average lives, man. We have to clock in to work. Some of us may own businesses, okay? But we're not millionaires and billionaires. So our people will see us and say, well, what's the point? I was better off when I was in the world. Now I'm struggling. I can barely make ends meet. Now that I'm serving the Lord, what what a benefit is it for me? That's the mentality of a lot of you Israelites. Because you're stupid and you're carnal. And the Lord did not give you that gift of belief. Seeing that the Lord made this test, this this uh this walk that we're in to be a burden. It's supposed to be difficult. That's why the scriptures also tell us to walk by faith, not by sight. If you were to walk by sight, all you're going to really, you know, put your mind upon are the burdens before you. And you're not going to ponder on the prize and the, the perks that are going to come later because you're looking at things carnally. And you're not looking at things based off the spirit because you lack the vision. Okay? So yeah, you, you see what I'm doing and other brothers as a waste of our time. Ye have said it is vain to serve the power. And what profit is it that we have kept this ordinance and that we have walked mournfully before the Lord of hosts? Yeah, ever since we've turned to the Lord, we've been struggling. Ever since we've tried to separate from these heathen, we've been doing worse. What's the point? What are we doing? It seems like being wicked, being evil, you can make it. Why, why should we serve the Lord? That's how a lot of our people feel, man. And that's why a lot of our people are stuck on the dark side, so to speak. Okay? Because they're deceived. And at the end of the day, you don't want to be deceived.
I'm gonna close it with this. First Corinthians chapter six and verse nine. Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of the power? Be not deceived. Neither fornication, nor adulterers, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, nor thieves, nor covetous, nor drunkards, nor revelers, nor extortioners shall inherit the kingdom of the power. So don't be deceived, man. Okay? A lot of our people have the mentality that what we're doing is vain. So they'll go and partake in all these things that the world will partake in and they'll become deceived into thinking they'll be justified before the Lord and they're not going to be justified. You have to walk how the scriptures tell you to walk and we're showing you which way to go. Don't be deceived, man. But we know that the, the majority of you Israelites, you're going to be deceived because this isn't for you. Okay? And such were some of you, but ye are washed, but ye are sanctified, but ye are justified in the name of the Lord Yahweh Shai and by the spirit of our power. So we were once like a lot of you people who we rebuke now. We were once just like you, but we've been washed through the word. We've been washed through the names of Yahweh and Yahweh Shai. Okay? And now we have the ability to walk the righteous path and now we can show you which way to go. I know I said I'd close it here, but I'll, I'll close it with this one in Jeremiah. This is Jeremiah chapter 8 and verse 4. Uh, let me see. Moreover, thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, Shall they fall and not arise? Shall he turn away and not return? That's not what I want. Give me a second here. Jeremiah 8 and 3. And death shall be chosen rather than life by all the residue of them that remain of this evil family, which remain in all the places, whether I have driven them, saith the Lord of hosts. So yeah, the majority of you Israelites, you're going to choose death rather than life. And that's okay because that's your lot. The Lord is not missing any of his sheep. All of his sheep are going to come back to the fold. All of his elect are going to repent and turn back. And once they do, they're locked in. They're not going back into the world. But the rest of you Israelites, you're going to choose death rather than life because our people have become a bunch of degenerates. Our people have become an evil family. Our people have become worse than the heathen. OK, when you think about adultery, you have to watch Israelites more so. OK, when you think about someone trying to rob you, you got to think about Israelites more so. When you think about whores and harlots, you got to think about Israelite women more so. Because our people have become an evil family. And this is only for the elect. The elect are going to turn back. The elect are going to believe the rest of you Israelites. You're going to die in your unbelief. So be it, okay? But even with that, you're still the Lord's people. And of all the families of the earth, it tells you in Amos 3, out of all the families of the earth, the Lord is only dealing with the nation of Israel. So although our people are bugged out right now, it doesn't take away the Lord is still only dealing with you Israelites, okay? So you're either going to repent or you're going to die in your sins, man. That's the message. All right. So Lord willing, this lesson, it was simple. You know, it was edifying. And I'm going to go on ahead and give all thanks and praises unto our power. All right. Yahweh, Ba'ashem Yahweh Shai, Ba'ashem Warakakwadash.
Until my next lesson, Lord willing, I'm out, fellow one.